Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to install this winch mount plate and this worn VR10 winch onto our Jeep Moab. So hopefully you'll stick around and join us for that. If not, feel free to fast forward to the end results. <laughs> I think we're going to start off here by measuring the distance, the ground clearance from the fender to the floor to see what impact it has by adding this extra weight to the front of the Jeep. And we'll get our baseline on that, and then we'll go ahead and do the install on here. I'm going to also take the end caps off the metal bumper here. I've been wanting to do that to see how it looks. This is, and, then and it's roughly at three feet here at the top edge of the fender. So we'll compare that to where it's at once we put all this extra weight back on there. So we're going to go ahead and start undoing these bolts on here and see if this end piece comes right off. Start with that process. Seems like that one's stripped out. Guess we're gonna have to deal with that. But what I ended up being able to do was get uh, my uh, wrench on here to hold the back side of this thing and get this bolt out. Now if you take a look, these bolts, I mean, someone just ran these suckers in there. There we go. So not only do they just run it on down through there, but this broke off so it wasn't holding it when you tried to back the bolt out of there. So hopefully you guys don't run into problems like that if you do this at home. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. I think. All right, so I'm gonna take this next little plate off here. I know that comes off before I take this bumper off. Other side out, how it comes to piece. 13 millimeter, we're gonna go ahead and take the skid plate off the bottom here first. Off comes the skid plate. 18 millimeter socket, and we're gonna go ahead and take these bolts on the inside out, and we should be able to pull this bumper right off. And then using our trusty air wrench to go ahead and back these suckers off. Otherwise you're here all day working at these. All right guys, so we've got the battery disconnected. We now we've, we've gone and popped this connector off for the fog lights. We should be able to lift this bumper right off. There we go. Let me set it off to the side. All right, so the next thing it wants us to do is go ahead and remove these inner frame bolts here. And then we're gonna slide the plate up here and loosely connect it with those. So we'll go ahead and do that. Got those loosely fitted. All right guys, so the next it wants us to do is take the 
bolts and run them through the front loosely and get everything lined up. Now these are 18 millimeter on here and the nut is a 19 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and run these through, putting a washer on the front side and a washer on the back side. And we'll go ahead and get these started by finger. Now this is still a loose fit till you get everything lined up. Okay guys, now that we have this loosely on, these are loosely on there. We're gonna come underneath and tighten these brackets up, tighten these brackets up. We put the mounts back on here for the skid plate, lower air dam if you will. We'll tighten all these bolts up and then we'll be ready to grab that worn winch and put that onto the bumper itself. We've got that Mitch winch plate mounted. Now it's time to move on over to the Warren winch. All right guys, so you have to take these square nuts here and slide them into the posts. I'll tell you the two in the rear are kind of a pain with all the wires and everything to get your fingers back there and get them in there properly. But once you got those in there, then you can start the bolts up through the bottom. All four bolts are started. All right guys, to feed that line up through there, we found climbed underneath there and I found a slot to go up through to the battery and I'm going to use the uh, cable feeder here to fish this up through. And we'll go back down and get the power cable. And there goes the power cable. Alright guys, so we got the bumper pushed back on and now we have to go ahead and tighten down the bolts. We also put, also put the uh, front mount on here and pull the cable through there. We've got the wires pulled up through. They're not connected yet. All right, guys, so we got the bumper securely mounted down now. Now we're going to go ahead and put the end witch on here or the end hook on and uh, hook this up so it's nice and secure. All right, last but not least, the skid plate. Let's go ahead and get that mounted back up underneath. All right, so we've Tighten down these bolts down here, all the way across, and the two bolts over here, one there, and one there, and now this shield is on there. So we've got the battery cables now tightened down onto the battery. The ground and the positive are both down. So we're going to go ahead and pop this in here and make sure that the winch is functioning as we expect it to function. So to do that, there's a little cap on the side. Pull the cap up and over, out of the way. Plug the dongle in. It is keyed to go in only a certain way. And up should have it come out, which it appears to be functioning just fine. And we'll tap it a few times just to get it tight so it's not rattling around. There we go, that should do it. So there we go guys, we've got our winch installed. So now that we got this all buttoned up, we want to go back and measure that wheel height again. We measured it last time, it was at about three feet exactly from the center point here. So we'll go ahead and measure this again. And it really had no impact at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, it was fairly simple. It took me a little bit of time because I did have a stripped out uh, bolt on one of the ends here, but you really don't have to take these end caps off to take the bumper off. And actually this plate underneath, you could leave that on, but you would have to take the two rear bolts off of that to take this bumper off to do this install. But um, it's fairly simple. I took three to four hours doing this because I took my time. I was cleaning things up. I was looking things over, making sure the cables ran um, through the engine bay properly and generally 
trying not to die of the heat and uh, humidity out here because it's like 100 degrees and super humid. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you saw something that I did bad that I need to change around or uh, any recommendations, what you guys want to see next. Uh, we're going to try and get out on the trails here and get some actual trail videos. The reason why I went with the Warren VR10 is because I actually had a coupon from work for putting in X amount of years that gave me a discount that I was able to use at Cabela's. And Cabela's has a very limited selection of Warren winches. They don't have any other brands. And they had the VR10, the VRSs, and then their upper scale Warren winches are also available through them. But for me, I didn't want to buy a, you know, $2,000 winch. The VR10 fit my use perfectly. I don't wheel as much as I would like to or as much as a lot of other people get to. A lot of the other people that I myself even watch on YouTube, they get to get out there and they probably use their winch far more than I do. But I wanted to get a winch that was substantial. I had that money to use at Cabela's. The VR10 was perfect for that. And I didn't need the synthetic cable because, again, I didn't want to have to replace my cable every couple of years from degradation from being in the sun and whatnot. And the steel cable seemed to work perfectly for me. Yes, you have to be more careful and safe with it, but you should be doing that whether you have a synthetic cable or a steel cable regardless. So this setup just seemed perfect for me. So with the discount, I was able to apply a few hundred dollars to the price of it, which brought this down into the same price category as say a Smitty built or something equivalent at that level. And with the Warren, I know I'll be able to use this for many, many years without a problem. And if something were to happen to it or I have an issue with it, I will have no problem finding parts to replace it. Now the so Rugged Ridge winch plate, why did I go with that instead of going with the supporting Warren winch plate? Well, I chose the Rugged Ridge due to the economic value of it. It had a decent price. It wasn't a huge expenditure. The Warren winch plate is a lot more expensive. It has a lot of good ratings on it. I did review a bunch of other options. There are several cheaper options in comparison, but in looking at the reviews and some of the feedback from other users who have used them, those other cheaper options are cheaper for a reason. They seem to have flexing issues and could rip out of the vehicle and you know, that one time that I have to use this thing, I don't want it to pop out of the front bumper because I had a poor mounting plate. So that, that with the price and the reputation for Rugged Ridge, it was the best option for me. Please subscribe, like the video, follow us on Instagram at Quick Shifts, and uh, leave us a comment down below. I try to read all of them, try to respond to every single one that I can. And we really appreciate the feedback that you guys give us. And uh, maybe you guys can give us some suggestions on the next mod for the Moab. We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and what we should do. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great one.